Uh, it is the morning of the 9th of February. It is about uh, 10 minutes to 2 a.m. And this is a pre-recorded video, so you're going to see this in March sometime, I guess. Something like that. Um, it being February, we're having a bit of a cold snap right now, and it's cold, it's windy, it's snowing a little bit, and that snow is coming sideways tonight. It's stormy and blustery out there, and that's the kind of weather to enjoy something like what I got right here. This is a heavily peated whiskey from Brook Laddie called Port Charlotte PC-12. Now, I had first heard of this whiskey back in 2016 sometime, and from the time I heard of it, I yearned and coveted it. I yearned to have an example of this. Now, last year, 2017, back in, what month was it? Uh, it was a while ago. April. I wanted to try old Pulteney 21 in the worst way. So I went to my favorite little store out in Sydney looking for it. They didn't have any. They said that somebody had just come in and bought all of it. Because the week earlier, there was a couple bottles of 21-year-old old Pulteney. So I went to another shop, another store, where they have just about the best selection of Scotch single malt whiskey in town. I did not find the Old Pulteney 21, but I did find another bottle of Old Pulteney 17, which is, was being discontinued at the time, and it's fantastic. But um, anyway, go back to 2016 when I, when I yearned, I began to yearn to own a bottle of this PC-12. It's a retail travel exclusive, or travel retail exclusive. And uh, you know what I should do? I should first pour a gram of this. This is, a, this is an event to open this guy up, because I have wanted to have this whiskey for about three years. I had my first initiation to Port Charlotte was PC, Port Charlotte 11, the 11 back in, oh, there's the bottle, PC 12. And I can't pronounce uh, whatever that is that it says there, but uh, it's heavily peated Port Charlotte PC-12. It's a travel retail exclusive. And um, yeah, I my first initiation to Port Charlotte was the 11. And I thought it was like the nectar of the gods. And then sometime thereafter, I was able to find Port Charlotte 10. And I think I had a bottle or two of that. And my fingernails should not have been trimmed earlier this week. Grr. Well, well, what am I going to use? Let's use this knife. And let's just, there, I think I've got the little tab out. Okay. I've got the tab. It's coming open. There we go. There's the foil. Where was I? Oh, yeah. And I could find the Port Charlotte 10, and I could find the Port Charlotte um, Scottish Barley for a while, and then I could get the Port Charlotte 10 Second Limited Edition for about the last two years, and there's still some on the shelf. But I ended up in this shop looking for the 21-year-old Old Pulteney, found the 17, and then this caught my eye. This 
this 12 on this cylinder that said Port Charlotte caught my eye. It was the only one on the shelf. And I said immediately, you're mine. I grabbed it. I just grabbed it and seized it and took it down to the, to the till and paid for it. I bought it. I spent $379.68 on a bottle of Old Paltney 17, which was $189.99. And this Port Charlotte 12 year old was $139.99, so $140. Uh, that would be $7 goods and services tax, and that would be $14 in liquor tax. So $21 of taxes on top of $140. It's $161.09 out the door just for this whiskey. The other one, the old Pultney, was more, but this is only 12 years old. And the other one was 17. And with the kind of weather we're having outside, this is the perfect drought. What does it say on here? I have. Oh, gonna need this here. Uh, Jim McGowan, Brooklady head distiller. Adam Hannett, Brooklady assistant manager. Travel retail exclusive. We believe terroir matters. That's what it says on here. We believe in Isla, we believe in people, we believe in authenticity, provenance, and traceability. We believe in slow, we believe in challenging convention, we believe in the soul of the artisan. Um, 58.7% alcohol by volume, so we're talking strong. Limited edition, Port Charlotte, the heavily peated, Brooklady Scotch Whiskey, it doesn't say how many bottles. Uh, distilled, matured, bottled, uh, unchill filtered and coloring free at Brooklady Distillery, Isle of Isla, Scotland. There's a whole bunch of finer writing on here, and it's, I can't read it because it, it's, there's no contrast. There is writing right here. Can you, I can't read that. It's, it's just impossible, at least for me. Maybe when I was 20 years old, I could read this, but I can't read this now at the age of 54. All right. This will occupy a prominent position on the wall back there. On the bottle, it says... Port Charlotte PC-12... Oilanach for a heil. I can't. I'm, I'm probably botched that pronunciation. And there's a bunch of writing on back here. Brooklady heavily peated, travel retail exclusive. You know what? It's a travel retail exclusive, but I got this in a regular store. How did it end up there? I don't know, but as soon as I saw it, I grabbed it. This Port Charlotte Isla single malt whiskey has been distilled at Brooklady Distillery by Master Distiller Jim McEwen in homage to the exceptional single malt produced in the village of Port Charlotte Isle of Isla until 1929. Responsible drinking, a whole bunch of international symbols such as don't be pregnant, uh, throw this out and recycle that, and so on and so on. Coloring free, 58.7%, wow. There's a bunch of fine writing right here. It says, this Port Charlotte Isla single malt whiskey has been distilled at, uh, I've seen that before. Okay, so anyway, give you a look at the bottle like that. Port Charlotte PC-12. 
and I will give you a look at the cylinder again. There's a guy with tools. Uh, there's Port Charlotte PC12. Unpronounceable, heavy, heavily peated, single malt. Okay, 10 minutes of showing you what it looks like. Sorry. <laughs> this is an event, and it is kind of blustery outside. Oh, I've wanted to taste you for almost three years. Oh, ho, ho, ho. there's peat. There's peat smoke. But it's not overpowering. It's a high ABV, so that high ABV might be acting as an anesthetic and taking some of the flavor away. I might have to add some water to this to make it palatable and tasty, because 58% is quite a bit. I'm good till about 51, 52, and then after that, I start to taste less. I'm getting citrus, I'm getting lemon lime on the nose. I don't believe there's any sherry cask involved here, so I'm going to get peat. I'm going to get lemon and lime, citrus. Ah, with the citrus, I'm getting some wood too. I'm getting some some oak. Uh, is this aged in ex bourbon? I would expect to get some. Getting a bit of alcohol burn on the nose. Lemon, lime, and wood. The peat it seems to be manifesting itself in the lemon and lime citrus notes. Now I'm getting a bit of road tar. Some of that. Railway tie creosote, dark creosote. The tar that they dip the railroad ties in. I will probably add some water after I taste it neat. There's some of that ashen peat, thick, tarry, mm. and once again citrus. Okay, I'm going to taste this neat. It's 58.9 or something percent, so it's, it's right on up there. Ooh. I'm getting a lot more wood. 
woody notes than I thought I would. I'm getting citrus, tar, dark tar, not the creosote liquid, but telephone pole stuff or very wooden. Getting some citrus, lime and lemon on the aftertaste. Um, it's quite dry in the finish. Mouth coating, mouth coating. But I think I'm missing a lot of the flavor because the alcohol, to a certain point, the alcohol adds flavor. But when you've got more alcohol than that certain amount, I'm guessing it's around 52-53% alcohol by volume. Beyond that amount of alcohol, you'll get less flavor. Alcohol brings more flavor to a certain point and less as it goes on. This one here, I'm getting less flavor. Ah, it's woody and tarry all at the same time. I'm going to have to add some water to this. I love it so far. But I think the addition of water will make it more, more drinkable and more flavorful. Here we go. I've added considerable drops of water to this. But don't forget that this is a quig sized dram. I usually pour to the fattest point of the Glencairn glass. And when you're pouring 58%, it's a lot, it's one and a half times almost pouring 40%. It's only my fourth dram of the night, but this one might completely get me wasted. <laughs> Because I'm feeling no pain at the moment. I've had two 40 percenters, which were the Glenlivet uh, Founders Reserve. I also had the Ballantine 17, and then I had the Bomore uh, 15 at 43%. And now we're jumping from 43% to 58. It's quite a jump. Uh, with the addition of some water, it's fresh on the nose. I'm getting some lime citrus, lime citrus. Yeah, uh, peat smoke. But it's not. I find that Port Charlotte peat smoke is not overpowering, and it's usually bonfirey, and I'm getting that. I'm getting some wood and smoke. It's bonfirey rather than medicinal, like you would find in a Lafroig, for example, and uh, I'm not getting a lot of iodine. Maybe a tiny little bit. No, it's more of a bonfire. The addition of water has removed some of the citrus. Hopefully it will remove some of the wood and bring in a little bit more of that smoke. Let's uh, try it again. Ooh. Citrus, lime and lemon. More lime and lemon 
than I got before. Also wood. Wood forward. Very lot of wood. Dry. Dry finish. The fading citrus and the fading wood. Surprisingly, not a lot of peat smoke. I'm guessing, have I said it before, that the peat smoke is manifesting itself somewhere in that um, citrus. Yeah, on the nose once again, I get railway ties. Railway ties, wood that was soaked in creosote and tar decades and decades ago. I'm surprised that the wood is so in your face. Mm. Wood, lemon, lime. The lemon and lime is quite strong. I thought I would be getting more peat, but I'm getting more wood than peat. And I'm getting lots of lemon and lots of lime. If I added a bit more water, what would happen? Ooh, I hope I didn't overdo it. This will be bringing it down into the 40s in terms of percent of alcohol by volume. Oh, now I'm getting bags and bags of citrus. A lot of lemon. Oh, oh, lemon and wood, tannins, a lot of tannins from the wood, and lemon, 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 the lime is gone, but there's a lot of lemon here. Lemon and wood tannins. I'm not getting a lot of smoke. I'm thinking that this Port Charlotte PC-12 is going to open up some more as we let the bottle sit and we let the liquid within oxidize. Ah, lemon. This is like lemonade. But at the same time, there's a bit of heartburn coming in because of the high ABV. Lots and lots of alcohol. Strong, very strong. I put water to it a couple times. Okay. It's very woody. Very oak forward. Lemony and oaky. And what else am I getting here? There's some more complexity to it than that. 
But I'd say Woody, Oki, a little bit briny, but not much. It's subtle, very subtle. Uh, I like it. I like it. And we've been going on for a long time already. This one will take some time to get to know and appreciate. Slanchava. Food quick. 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 Food quick.